Is it worth buying an expensive bike pump where its main feature is to work with another product which you've no intention of actually buying? Well, let's find out. Hi, it's Dave T here, and way back at the beginning of the year, I made this video on optimizing my mountain bike EDC kit, where I reduced the weight of the tools and spares I carry by 641 grams and the volume by 324 cubic centimeters, all without reducing the functionality. At the time, my kit included this Lazign pump, which is okay, but as I said at the time, I was never really that happy with it. Six months later, and my family bought me this 100cc EDC pump made by 1UP Components as a gift. In theory, this should be a better pump. And whilst actually bigger, it still should reduce the overall size of my kit by a small amount due to some innovative features. Now, there are some videos online reviewing this pump, but they tend to mainly focus on its ability to store the 1UP Components EDC tool, which I'm not going to buy. So in this video, I'll focus on what you get if you actually solely buy the pump. The packaging that the pump comes in is fairly basic, with the pump holder bolted to a backing card made of plastic rather than card, and looks to be designed to hang on display racks, and mine actually came in a Ziploc plastic bag. The card lists the specifications of the pump, but the majority of the space is used to detail the related EDC tool product, which is compatible with the pump. There are no instructions for the pump, which is not the end of the world, since after all it is a pump and pretty self-explanatory, but I think it would have made sense to at least explain this, how the CO2 inflator works. So for the packaging, a couple of points off for the use of plastic and limited instructions, but at least one bonus point for the use of two standard Presta valve caps to cover the bolts. This is most likely to stop the bolt ends from piercing the plastic bag, but still, nice touch. The pump does come with a fairly standard holder that will fix to any standard bottle bosses with the supplied 20mm M5 bolts. There's a branded rubber strap to hold the pump in place, but to be honest, it's pretty robust fit anyway, so the strap is really just a backup. There's no designed in provision for using tie wraps to secure the pump, so if you don't have any suitable water bottle bosses, then you'll need to rig something up or drop the pump in a backpack, which is what I'm going to do. The pump itself is an attractive bit of kit, CNC machine from aluminium alloy with a fine grooved black anodized finish. The white one-up branding text around where the handle meets the main body is refreshingly subtle. There's a weather seal around the body with some instructions on the upper body section advising that it should be slid up to meet the handle coming down to seal it. The closed length is 245 millimeters and the main body diameter is 29 millimeters with the handle being 33 millimeters. So there's plenty to get hold of whilst pumping and the groove finish also aids grip. This gives the pump a volume of close to 178 cubic centimeters. It weighs in at 164 grams, so not exactly lightweight, but this is a 100cc pump. At the business end, there is a fast on pressed ahead at right angles to the pump line, and Schrader valves are not actually supported by this pump. The lower section is actually plastic, but looks pretty robust, so I would expect it to easily survive a drop, for example, onto concrete if you drop it onto the road. The valve head is green anodized aluminium, and there's a rubber dust cap to stop debris fouling the valve. So to get the most obvious functionality of the pump out of the way first, how well does this actually inflate tires? Using this 26 by 2.25 inch tubed mountain bike tire as a test, I completely deflated the inner tube and then counted the number of strokes to actually fully pump it which was 160 strokes to reach 29 PSI. For comparison, or perhaps just for the fun of a workout, I repeated the process with the previous smaller design pump, which took 320 strokes to reach the same pressure. The 1UP pump was not only quicker using less strokes, but also much easier in terms of effort. As a pressure test, I also tried to see what pressure I could reach, and in this case, the 1UP loses out. With the Lazine, I managed to reach a final pressure of 39 PSI. With the 1UP though, I struggled to get the pressure over 30 PSI. It's certainly more effort per stroke at, at those pressures with the 1UP, but I don't think that is actually the issue. I could feel the pressure escaping around the valve because with the fast on head, it's just not feasible to get a high pressure seal. In terms of ease of use though, the fast on head worked okay and wasn't difficult to keep engaged with the valve at the lower pressures. Some care is always required with this type of pump to keep it square and not strain the valve. This is especially true of with tubeless tires where upsetting the valve seal is more of an issue. Overall though, it worked well. 
The second trick that the OneUp has up its sleeve is the built-in CO2 inflator. This is accessed by unscrewing the aluminium valve section from the front of the pump. You then attach a new CO2 canister by screwing it on directly all the way past the point at which the set canister is pierced and keep on going until it's tight and sealed. The inflator is then used by pressing it onto the presto valve and slightly unscrewing the canister from the adapter and that releases the CO2. The process is not difficult, but does take a little bit of getting used to, so it may be worth sacrificing a cartridge to practice before you actually need to use it out on the trail. Now the third trick of the one-up pump is that the CO2 cartridge can actually be stored inside of the pump. The top cap simply pulls off and this has a threaded hole inside it which matches the CO2 canister's thread. The cap and cartridge assembly can then be put back into the pump shaft. The 100cc pump can, in addition to the CO2 cartridge, also accommodate one-up components EDC tool. This is a slim, lightweight, multi-tool designed specifically to fit inside either the bike steerer tube or, in this case, inside the EDC pump. Now, as you might have seen in my other videos, I actually purchased the Wolf Tooth 8-bit pack pliers, so I've no need for a one-up EDC tool. So there's actually just under 110 millimeters of space inside the pump going spare. Now I could of course just drop in a second CO2 cartridge but that would rattle a fair bit and I've already decided to carry just one. Dropping random bits inside is also an option but there's a chance of them getting stuck. So it was time to roll out the design software and 3D printer to create this stash tube to hold small items such as a spare bacon strips, valve caps and so on. The design is fairly simple, it's basically a tube with a cap, but I did add a few extra features. The top cap has a recess for safely holding a spare Presta valve. The storage tube has a slot down one side which is narrow enough to stop anything actually falling out but wide enough to use a blade or perhaps a screwdriver to pull out anything that might otherwise get stuck. To make this easier I also 3D printed a smaller slide piece which allows the stored items to be pushed out just using a finger. Just to keep it looking pretty I printed a cap and slider in silk green filament that almost matches the green anodizing on the pump. I also printed a small bumper to go on the bottom of the pump so that the stash tube doesn't touch the internal seals at the bottom of the pump piston cavity. So in conclusion, at just under 60 pounds, this pump is pretty much double the price of the Lazine that I'm replacing. You do of course get a CO2 inflator as part of that, which would maybe cost you five or 10 quid, but even so, it's not a cheap option. Getting the faults out of the way first, the most obvious limitation is the upper pressure limit of about 30 PSI. I think this is just a feature of the head design, and to be honest, I think that the target market for this pump is very much mountain bikers, for which 30 PSI is probably more than adequate, especially as an out on the trail get me home fix. To be honest, with the design, Whilst it would reach the high pressures, it takes so many strokes, I'm not sure I'd even have the patience to keep pumping that long. Other complaints are pretty minor. The dust cap does want to fold back towards the valve, which is a little bit annoying, and I found I had to adjust my grip on the head to keep it out of the way. Couple with that, the direct or fast on pump heads are always a little bit more awkward to use in certain situations, as you don't want to strain the tire valve whilst pumping. It doesn't lock on, which could be considered an advantage, apart from the high pressure issue. And of course, the Schrader fans out there, I'll remind you again, this does not work with Schrader, just for Presta valves. But those are pretty minor complaints, and overall it works as well as most pumps and better than many, with a bias towards high capacity over pressure. The main reason for purchasing this pump has to be, therefore, the internal pump storage and the overall build quality. In terms of optimizing my kit weight, the one-up pump is about 30 grams heavier than the combined weight of the Lazine pump and the CO2 inflator. It's also about 10 cubic centimeters larger than the Lazine pump plus the CO2 inflator and cartridge. Now that's a loss on both weight and size until you consider that the one-up has almost double the pumping capacity and after inflating a 26 inch mountain bike tire about six to eight times in a row for making this review, the one-up is certainly much easier on the arms and with 29 inch tires, it has to be an even greater advantage. Add to that the fact that I can keep some additional items such as bacon strips inside the pump, then it actually tidies up my kit even more. Then of course, there's the less scientific bonus that in my opinion at least, it looks and feels better. I'm certainly glad I received this as a gift, even though I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna be looking forward to my first puncture. 
I hope you found this video helpful or interesting. And if you have, then please do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing to my channel to see more videos that I make. But most of all, thanks for watching.